today I'm going to film a day in the life in Florida. Some of my training horses are going home in November, so my good friend Haley is coming out to help me get some videos and photos of them, just because I like to have like one nice photo of each training horse so I can remember them a little bit better. just got here. Also, you can talk in the background of all these clips because it'll make it less weird. Okay, so you can barely see your face. And we are on our way up to the barn. We're going to start with the three-year-olds and then uh, I think we'll do the green horses under saddle and then we'll move along to whatever I have left. That, that was awful. That's the best I can do. Good, how are you? Super. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start with Diva. She is a three-year-old warm blood here to be started. She is jumping bread. Um, most of mine, or usually most of them, are dressage bread, so it's kind of interesting to have her. Both of my babies right now are jumper bread, and they're very easygoing and sweet and soft and um, her owner is actually going to be a 14 year old girl who is riding the circuit right now and showing a bunch of horses and doing really, really well. And she's trying to see what prospects are, are going to be the best for her. So they came in not really knowing how to cross tie or get hosed down or anything, super minimal handling. So that's been part of the process with them as well. Along the way was like tacking up and like teaching them to ride and all is getting used to being in here. Um, and they've both been really good about learning it. Like a couple times they took a step forward and kind of hit the pressure on the end, but uh, they're pretty prepped with understanding how to give forward and backwards to pressure. So they've been really easy. Okay, this is the brother. His name is QI. He is super friendly, goofy, dorky gelding. And he's came a little bit faster along under saddle than his sister so far. I have a feeling that once she figures it out that she is going to surpass him a little bit. So this little saddle, I don't know how I found it, but I use it on all my colt starts now. You think I'd be normal and like completely switch over to a western saddle, but I don't know why. I really like this this little eventing saddle thing. It seems to work well and fits most of the babies. Um, but yeah, these guys, QI and Diva, have been getting tacked up on crosshairs probably for like a week now. Uh, I spend a lot of time tacking them up just in the open or in a stall, one of the two. That way they can be like loose and move their feet, although I want them to stand still when getting tacked up, so I always reward that, but it kind of lets me know um, and gives them a chance to communicate if they're feeling uncomfortable so I can help them work through it before putting them in a restriction area. Less than a week, I'm going to take a trip. You guys will meet Pilot later on in this video, but Pilot is a really cool Mustang. He was trained by... Amber and Isidro Espinoza, and then I had a client that was super interested in him, so I was out there for the Vegas tip challenge, so I loaded him on my trailer and came here, and he's been in training with me for a month to get more advanced under saddle. So I like to start with round penning and then add the line to teach them how to like lunge off the line and stuff, or out of the round pen and such in an arena. That way when they go to the show world, if they do need to be lunged for some reason, if that's like the routine the owner does, drop they're kind of ready to go for that. I like to make sure that my horses are responding really softly, walk, trot, canter, especially the canter. That way when I get on them, it's just a really quiet cue for them to go into it and it's not that big of a deal. So I always make sure that before I do much with these guys that I can get on them with a loose rein and that they stand still when I mount them and kind of wait until I ask them to take off. I mean, that kind of falls true with every horse, but I really emphasize it with the babies just to make sure that we're kind of on the same page. And I start all of them with the halter 
and right away I get them understanding like leg and stuff and she's pretty new to under saddle which she's gonna look really green especially in her steering and everything and I do like holding a stick with them because I feel like when I start to transition from not having a center person I can really drive them forward more with the stick and kind of get my point across quicker than doing like a lot of clicking and uh, getting them dull to my cues. I have a reinforcement that's a little bit stronger. And I'll start with these guys just walking around, working on getting the forward motion kind of out on the circle, work on my one rein stops, my halts, and then uh, yeah, once I have some basic body control in here and have a pretty good go forward button, I'll start getting into the arena with them. There we go. Okay. This is Flurry. She is actually probably in my video of the training horses from last year because I had her last year when she was a three-year-old. Now she is a four-year-old and she is staying in training for this season to get a little more advanced under saddle. She might start being popped over some ground poles or some cavalettis and such and uh, I'm really starting to teach her how to get softer with the bit. I think I only had her for two months last year so she wasn't quite as far along as most of the colts because I have them normally for three months, but she picked up right where she left off. She's been really, really fun to get going. Uh, she was not one of my favorites last year. There's nothing against her. It's just there were some other ones that I liked a little more, but she is definitely one of my top ones this year. Um, she is bred to be a hunter. I'm pretty excited to see her in the future and what she kind of turns into and improves with, but like I said, she has been just a joy to have this season. She's been really great, and I love that she's kind of just a get-on-and-go ride, and then every ride it feels like we're just constantly improving. And my next riding horse is Pilot. He is a five- or six-year-old Mustang from Green Mountain, Wyoming, originally trained by Isidro and Amber Espinosa, and then one of my clients bought him, so he came with me all the way from Arizona, to get a little bit more finished under saddle and started over some fences and this is maybe his third or fourth time jumping so we're just learning how to kind of be confident going up to fences and not really rush lines and figure out how to pick up our feet and all. I didn't get too many videos of him flatting so you'll have to take my word that he's really soft under saddle but he's been really fun to have. He's probably the nicest Mustang that I've ridden aside from Lynx of course but he is definitely my second pick of uh, talent-wise under saddle. I'm very impressed with his eagerness and his canter is superb when I'm riding him in the dressage arena for sure because I'm really focusing on it but he's been really great and I will be bringing him home in a few days all the way up to Maine.
He keeps looking at you like, what are you doing? <laughs> Sam can tell what horse she's had up here just by the way that post smells. It smells like Lynx because he sweats after he rides and he goes like this with his head and rubs it on. <laughs> and it's not my, there's not a towel for me to <laughs> fix my face with, so I have to rub it on the, you know. It Sam also like rubs her face on the board to get water off. There, like I said, there's no towel and I couldn't reach all of it on my shirt. I had no choice. There wasn't an option there. I'm just trying to do the best I can. We ran out of water today and I refuse to go to my camper and get more because I'm stubborn. I only have like like four horses left and I won't I won't back down. It's like a reward, you know like it's like a reward. <laughs> it's like when you work a horse you're allowed to take like three sips of water and then you gotta work another one before you get three more sips of water. Such a reward to wipe your face on the post. <laughs> That's because I didn't have water though. <laughs> Can you walk backwards? We'll find out. So <laughs> I haven't done an update on her in like, gosh, it's been almost a month. If you get spooked and somehow get away, I would have no problem. So this is Aoka, and I have quite the variety of training horses right now. They're all like doing very different things. Um, she is here in training to become a less spooky trail horse that's safe for beginners, anyone that kind of comes around to her owner's place, because he has another one that he'll, he'll ride. And, She's supposed to be pretty suitable for anyone, so we've been working a little bit in the arena, doing some softening work um, with her face, getting her more controlled with her rib cage, over for my legs and such, and then of course a lot of exposure on trail, moving around, um, and, you know, seeing how she reacts to different like scenarios, like branches falling, dogs running out, all that good stuff, and she doesn't really react at all now. But when she would react, I was trying to figure out a solution to help her out, which is why we went to the more body control in the arena type thing, even though she's not going to be an arena horse. Um, and then she actually isn't really all that afraid. She kind of just has a quarter that runs out and uses that as an excuse to uh, turn around. So that's why I started riding with this. So when I figured this out, I would give her a little tap, send her forward, and then she would be confident riding the rest of the ride. And now I haven't had to tap her in about two weeks or so. But uh, I still ride with it just in case. I don't mind. I'm used to like holding a crop when I ride. But she's doing really, really great. I'm happy with her. And she goes home in about three days or so. And we're going to keep up with building the owner's confidence by me going there like once a week and riding with him and her on the trails there with his other horse and such. And yeah, so I'll just show a little bit of what she's doing in the arena now. And then we're going to take her out. Haley's going to ride her and I'm going to ride Lynx. And we're going to just kind of hack her on the trail on the street a little bit. For an Appaloosa, she has, she has a nice man tail. She does. She's really nice. I'm kind of biased. I'm not the biggest Appy fan. Yeah. But she, uh, she's got a good brain too. I mean, this horse tries. Like I said, when her quarter runs out, it runs out and she's like, yeah, I'm going to go home. She doesn't do anything real naughty. Um, and she's always willing and she's sweet and kind and she doesn't have an attitude. She's nice to work with. We're out on the road. I made Lynx work. He's going to be super bummed when he works later today. We have Aoka. We have Haley. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to be out here for a hot second. Lynx is going to be super salty when I take him out in an hour and pack him up in dressage tack when he realizes he has a lesson he has to ride in today. I will share more about Piscata in her own video. But Lynx and I had our lesson um, working with a super awesome trainer who's really nitpicky. She's working a lot on my position because I'm used to either kind of like a western trail position or a hunter jumper position and I'm working on dressage and I ride better without stirrups but obviously you really shouldn't practice like that if you're wanting to get into the show ring. 
and we're working on really correct riding with lengths because he likes to kind of take the easy way out and his hips are always a little bit far off so it's easier for him to uh, canter but it's not effective and it doesn't work his muscles so you can see me here kind of working through it and correcting him so that way he has to really get his hip underneath himself but we had a really nice riding lesson yeah maybe i'll share more in the future i'm still wearing my spurs i'm gonna trip this is like the part of the day where i lose my motivation usually i lose my motivation if i go and eat lunch so i try to skip over lunch but like by the time i ride links i'm kind of like out of it luckily i just have one more to work and it's on the ground um, I don't really know how like last year I used to do, I think I had like 19 or 20 horses because I feel like I'm slacking this year, but it takes the same amount of time. I don't know if I'm just doing like way shorter sessions or honestly, I don't know what's going on. My horses are doing well though, but I don't think I'll ever take more than like eight at a time now, maybe 10 max. here so now I'm gonna put away all my stuff get my little workstation cleaned up and ready to go for tomorrow and uh, bring Mo back to her pen and then work the feral work and that's it for the horse lineup right now She is not a Mustang. She's just a feral horse. Um, she's been at the farm for a while now. I wasn't really around when she initially got here for gentling, but this horse just is not interested in connection with humans at all. She has no interest in it. I've tried basically every method that I can possibly think of. Um, and our only goal with her is to be able to catch her and lead her and that's it. And like, Half the time she forgets what pressure is and the other half the time she just she'll just wander off. So she hasn't been able to leave the Mustang pens because she's not reliable in the sense that, you know, if she just doesn't want to be there, I have a feeling she'll just run right through a fence or jump it or whatnot and I don't think we'll be able to catch her in a larger area. So hopefully we can kind of figure it out here soon and make it so that she's catchable because right now she's only catchable by me. Um, so right now my approach with her is just going up, quietly getting her, and then doing some quiet desensitizing work, making it a really positive experience, and then leaving her be. She used to be super twitchy when I would go up with the halter. She's been pretty good the last two days, but again, this horse isn't very consistent. She's a little unpredictable in like how she's good, how she's gonna be that day. So even just when she acknowledges me and kind of looks at me, I, I slow down to her and I kind of relax my body. But the goal is just to be able to walk up to her like a normal horse and alter her. And it is a fairly big deal for her to acknowledge me when I'm this close because before she would kind of be shut out. She'd be shut out and just keep her head completely forward. So like I can walk up to her. Without her moving right now, I can get the halter over her nose and tie it up. So obviously, the snorting from this horse, you can tell she's super 
her tense about it. Like she's not comfortable with this. I don't know if it would fly in a larger area. And she, uh, I don't know if I already mentioned, she's a kill pen rescue. Her owner bought six horses from the kill pen. Two of them were pregnant that she didn't know, so now she has eight horses. This one's sensitive and just never really came around to the point of like liking humans or wanting to interact with them. So I probably won't show too much of her session. It's pretty boring because most of it is literally just standing here petting her, walking away, coming back, petting her. Um, getting her to acknowledge me and kind of look at me, so I'm going to tip her nose towards me here. Good girl. And then I'll go ahead and release. Good. Another thing she really doesn't like that I'm trying to work on is just touching her face like super soft in this area. Usually she'll pin her ears, sometimes she'll fly backwards. Um, so I just want her to be okay with my hand just kind of resting across her nose, not even with any pressure there or anything. Good. She's a lot better with the neck being touched. She's bracy and brings her head up. Like Again, this is significantly better, but still not quite good enough for someone to just come in, halter her, and leave her around. All right, a little voiceover here. So we've been doing the flag desensitizing work for quite a while now, and uh, sometimes I get a reaction from it, sometimes I don't. And I can sometimes switch it up and use a lunge whip or a ribbon wand and whatnot. And today we have reaction on our right side. So when she is spooking at it and running away from it, I'm not going to bring the tool away from her because I don't want her to realize if she runs away, the object leaves, just like if someone were walking up to her to halter her. So I'm going to keep it at that consistent distance and then go back to that sweet spot rubbing. So kind of near the withers slash base of the neck. And then I'll release and I'll go back to having her approach the scary object with the object moving away. So that's where I kind of sway it back and forth in front of me and I ask her to give to pressure. This is one of her other struggle points is giving to pressure no matter what I do, whether it be sending or a lot of body control work. This horse always seems to really struggle with this, but we are coming up and brainstorming ways to think through it. I forgot to do an outro, but that is kind of what my days in October looked like. I had, I think it was like eight horses a day to work, and I do promise to give an update on my magic mare soon. I did film with her today, but the video was already getting pretty darn long, so I figured I'd put it into its own section. A big thank you to Haley for filming for me today, because I haven't gotten a single photo or video of any of my training horses this year, so it was really helpful to have her out today. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I appreciate the support to my channel in any way that you give it, and uh, stay tuned for the next video.